October 2003. An amateur astronomer is taking photographs of the largest planet in our solar system when he sees something strange. A dark spot appeared on Jupiter back in 2003, which was very strange, very surprising. Nobody expected it. Scientists initially suggest that like Jupiter's famous red spot, the dark dot could be a storm in Jupiter's violent atmosphere. The big red spot of Jupiter is actually a storm that's raged now for, for at least 300 years. But they come and they go. So it wouldn't be too surprising if a new spot suddenly appeared on this giant planet. While a storm could generate a spot on Jupiter's surface, for it to be visible through telescopes, it would have to be larger than any weather system ever seen on Earth. Jupiter's atmosphere is massive. For something to create a black spot that big would require a huge amount of energy to be released. An alternative idea for the spot is that it could be the site of an asteroid or comet impact. Jupiter's colossal size and powerful gravitational pull make it a prime target for anything flying through the solar system. Jupiter is this giant planet that pretty much vacuums up stuff as it goes along. It's quite possible that a foreign body such as a comet could impact Jupiter and cause massive explosion scars. In fact, it's happened. Comet Shoemaker-Levy impacted Jupiter and you saw a beautiful string of dark black spots. But even on Jupiter, a big impact is a once in a decade event. And records reveal that none was predicted around the time of the spot's appearance. Human beings creating spots on the surface of a planet 500 million miles away sounds impossible. But just a month before the dark spot is photographed, NASA's Galileo probe is floating toward Jupiter as it nears the end of its life. And there is a major problem with disposing of the dying spacecraft. It carries a fully functioning nuclear reactor. Scientists fear that Galileo's nuclear-powered generator could wreak havoc on one of the most promising places in the solar system for hosting extraterrestrial life. There was a danger that the Galileo spacecraft might actually impact Europa, which is what we didn't want to have happen, particularly now that we think there could be life under the ice in this big ocean. We don't want to impact this spacecraft into a life-bearing object. At the time the Galileo mission was planned, there was little evidence to suggest there could be living creatures beneath the ice of Europa, so scientists didn't worry about probe disposal. But the fear of contaminating a life-bearing world forces them to create a final plan to incinerate the spacecraft and its plutonium reactor. We knew we had to do something with this spacecraft. We just couldn't let it float around in space. So we decided that we would actually put Galileo uh, to its death by plunging it into Jupiter. As NASA's decision goes public, a Dutch physicist, Jaco van der Voort, warns that sending nuclear material into Jupiter's volatile atmosphere could have catastrophic consequences. Jaco van der Werp's theory is that the Galileo probe, which carries plutonium in its core, could actually be imploded by the pressure of the atmosphere and cause Jupiter to turn into a massive fireball. Undeterred, NASA crashes Galileo into Jupiter. We effectively exploded a nuclear device in Jupiter's atmosphere. There was some effort to actually look at the spacecraft as it went into the planet. It's pretty amazing that it all vaporized within a few hours of hitting that surface. This one object from mankind is now just part of the ephemeral gases of the planet. Despite the remarkable timing of its appearance, the evidence seems to indicate the Galileo explosion did not create the 2003 dark spot. Scientists are now working on a theory that the appearance of at least some of the dark spots on Jupiter could be caused by atmospheric phenomena. It's speculated that we may be seeing the, the effect of hydrocarbons created uh, by aurora. It's like the aurora borealis on the Earth, but many thousands of times more powerful. But it's still a mystery. 
In a strange twist of fate, Galileo's greatest discovery, that one of Jupiter's moons could hold life, condemned the probe to destruction. But some mysteries that defy explanation are much closer than the Jupiter system. January 8, 2014. The Opportunity rover has spent 10 years scouring the red planet for minerals. As it crosses the ridge on the edge of the 14-mile-wide Endeavour crater, it spots something confusing. We took some color pictures of it, and that's where the jelly donut came from. Kind of round, about donut size, with this you know, reddish, purplish dimple uh, in the middle. The unidentified object looks like nothing else ever seen on Mars. But when scientists look at photographs of the same patch of ground from 12 days earlier, the oddity evolves into a mystery. NASA is initially unable to explain how the mysterious rock could have moved. Former NASA scientist Richard Hoover has his own theory. It's probably part of a meteorite that came in and landed on the surface of Mars and broke into pieces. And that one of the pieces happened to land relatively close to the rover. While Hoover's theory is plausible, there is no corroborating evidence available. The rover doesn't have any kind of a seismograph. There's no way to, unless we visually saw a new crater appear. That's the only way we'd be able to detect it. When NASA does make an official statement, it suggests the jelly donut is a rock dislodged from the rover's wheel. The Opportunity rover did a, a kind of a pirouette. And we think that in the process of that wheel moving across the ground, that we kind of flicked this rock, it kind of tiddly winked it out of the ground, and that it, it moved to the location that, where we see it. I can tell you that for having driven Jeeps and rovers across deserts on the Earth, it actually didn't surprise me at all. What we think happened is it crushed the rock. Some of the rock went into the wheel well, you know, like in your washer machine, kind of getting mixed around before it eventually came out. But even if the wheel theory is correct, NASA scientists admit that the jelly donut still poses other questions. Outside, and it's got kind of a weird, deep red color, not a Martian kind of red. And we're seeing a strange composition. No one has ever published any scientific details of what was the chemical composition, what was the nature of the reddish interior. These are the kinds of questions that the biologists want to know to think about, was it a habitable environment?